in this tutorial we're going to cover the paint tab and we're going to talk about how to make a nice visual design for your Bitsy game. Uh, so first, uh, let's just talk about where you can find the paint tab and what you can do with it. So if you've entered um, the editor's window for Bitsy and you don't see your paint tab, just go up to the top. Um, and if you don't see this top thing, it's under tools. And you're going to go click on the paint tab and this will pop up. So you have a couple options here. You have an avatar, you have tiles, you have sprites, and you have items. And there's going to be a couple of defaults in here. So your default avatar is going to look like this. Um, and that's this guy right here. And you can move him around um, just by being on the avatar tab and then clicking. Um, so then your tiles, this is the default and it looks like this. Um, and they only have one default in here. And then you can add as many as you want um, just by clicking around your worlds. And then if you click on the same square that already has a tile on it, um, it'll just take it off. So then for your sprites, same thing as with the avatar sprites, you can only have one of them unique in the world. Um, even if you have multiple rooms, um, you could only have the cat, for example, in this room. And if you made another room, you couldn't put the exact same cat in both rooms. It has to be just in one. Um, they only have the cat as the default, um, but there are two items that they have as default. So I'll show you, here's the key and here's the teacup. And you can have as many of these as you want, um, just like tiles. but um, I'll show you what happens when you interact with all of these guys. So let's put the teacup, let's put it over here. Um, and then let's just click play. So when you're playing your game, you can use the WASD keys or the arrow keys to move around. Um, and then if you interact with something that is a tile, you can walk right through it unless you've ticked it. Um, as a wall. So let's make this tile a wall. And now when we play it, now you can't go through them because um, they're solid because we've marked them as walls, which you just do right here on the block tab. Okay, and now let me show you what happens when you interact with an item. So these two right here are items, the teacup and the key, um, and you should be able to walk over them and then it will give you some sort of dialogue and it'll disappear. So you found a nice warm cup of tea. And now it's gone. It's in your inventory, presumably, but um, all we know is that when you interact with items, um, something happens and then they disappear. Same thing goes with the key. And then this is um, just giving an example of things you can do with text that I'll show you later. But again, items disappear. Sprites, on the other hand, do not. You can keep interacting with them multiple times. Um, and I'm just continually pressing the down button so that I keep interacting with it. Um, but this guy is just going to stay here forever. Um, okay, so that's what these different types of things are. Um, and then how you would change it is if I wanted to change the way that this block looked, for example, um, I would just color it in in whatever design I wanted to, and it would change in the world. So if you've already placed things in the world, then it'll update um, as you work on it in here. So now this is our kind of like a tile design. Um, so, but if you wanted to make something new, all you would do is click this add drawing um, and then it'll be whatever type um, that you click on. I was in the tile tab. So if I clicked new drawing here, um, then it, this will be a tile type. So why don't I just make like something real simple, um, something like that. So this isn't showing up in the world yet because I haven't placed any of these tiles. So let me just make this a little bit more obvious what it is. Um, and then I can place these in the world wherever I want. And if I want to make a long line of them, I can just drag my mouse around. And if I want these to go away, I just do that. Um, and you can make these look however you want. Um, your avatar, you edit in exact exactly the same way. So maybe I don't want this guy to look like this weird Neanderthal type thing. Um, maybe my avatar, maybe, maybe it's a star. Let's say it's a star. It's a little star running around. Um, and then you just kind of want to get a shape that reminds you of whatever thing you're trying to make. Um, so it's a little hard for me to get a star that looks right, but you know, maybe it's something like that. And if I really wanted this to animate and look like a star, I would click the animation tab and, you know, maybe I would, I would change it a little bit. 
yeah, that looks a little bit shinier. Um, and then maybe I want to add some of these guys. Yeah, now it kind of looks like it's flickering and glowing a little bit. Um, and then if you play, this guy every second is going to animate. Um, but it doesn't animate like in time with when I move or anything. It just animates on its own cycle. Um, but it still acts like the, the avatar, even though I've changed the way it looks. Um, same thing goes with sprites and items. So maybe I want this cat to animate a little bit. So I click on the animate button. Um, and maybe I want its tail to flicker a little bit. Yeah, one of the challenges of making art in Ditsy that looks good is that you are so limited with this 8-bit style. Like, you only have so many boxes to check or uncheck, and there's not a lot to work with. So you have to really think about what is the characteristic of a cat that you're trying to get across to make people know, yeah, that looks like a cat. So you want to get the silhouette kind of close to what it is, and with your animation, you want to think about, okay, well, how would I know it's a cat? So when I think of, like, cute, cartoony-style cats, I think of, like, a blinking eye, I think of a wagging tail, I think of moving ears. Um, and some of those things are more difficult to achieve than others. Like, moving the ears like this doesn't really read cat to me, so, um, but, but the tail does. So those are the kinds of choices that you want to think about making um, as you're going through your visual design and figuring out um, what is clearly communicating to your players, this is a cat, this is a key, or whatever it is. But let's try making something else. So I've made a slice of cake before, um, so I'm going to call this cake, and I'm just going to put a dot right here so we can see it being built in the world as we're doing it. Um, and I don't remember exactly how I made this, but I remember I started out with some kind of cake-like shape, um, I think it was a little bit bigger than this. And then I just remember I took a slice out of it. Um, and that doesn't look super cakey, but if you animate it and you're like, okay, well, here's the slice that we took out of the cake. Um, it looks a little bit closer to a cake. And you know, that's still not perfect. It looks kind of like Pac-Man. Um, but um, another thing that we can add to it is, and this is a sprite, so it's not going to disappear when we interact with it, but I can add dialogue to this to say it's a cake, or you ate a slice of the cake, or whatever it is. So um, if I want to do that, I can just go to this dialogue tab, and I'll go over this in much more detail in a later video, but I'm just going to very simply add a little bit of dialogue to this just to show you what this would look like. Um, and now, when we interact with our cake, we're going to see this dialogue about eating the cake. So that clues us in a little bit more on top of the animation, on top of the visual design, that this is cake. So it's all these little um, limited elements working together that really sells the 8-bit style um, and makes, even though you have very limited resources, makes your design choices come through. Um, yeah, okay, so this is a little bit clearer that it's a cake now that um, we've said you eat a slice of cake, it's delicious every time you interact with it. Um, so yeah, so um, let me show you, maybe I'll just do one more example. Um, let's try an item. So we already have tea, we have a key. Um, maybe I want to make a heart. Um, and I'm just going to kind of freehand this. Um, so for artists that are trying Bitsy, this might be a lot easier for you um, than for some of the rest of us because uh, I definitely struggle with trying to figure out how to make something that looks like what I'm trying to get across. It's definitely a lot of trial and error for me, but for people with a little more experience, this might go a little bit faster. Um, okay, so that looks like a heart, but I maybe I want the heart like beating and pulsing. So let me try to just make it a little bit smaller and just see what that looks like. I'm just going to take away some of these edge pieces. Um, huh. And maybe, you know, yeah, that looks pretty good. That's not perfect, but, um, you know, that's pretty good. And maybe I'll put a couple of these throughout um, just to show you that um, you can interact with them and pick them up. And that um, whatever you do to the thing in your paint tab is going to work for all of these guys. Um, and so if I want to add dialogue here, um, 
This is item two dialog because I didn't name it. So I'm gonna go ahead and name it heart. Um, and then when I go here, because I, I set this name after I created this, I have to rename this to heart dialog. Um, and just make sure that this is um, the same, that these are connected, that they're not um, disconnected because that can happen sometimes. Um, so I'm just gonna say something like, Um, so maybe something like this. Maybe every time you collect a heart, your hit points go up. And I haven't um, set a variable for your hit points, and I haven't made your hit points go up, but I'm just saying that for this, for the purposes of this tutorial. Um, but in the next one, um, I'll show you how to how to code something like that. So if I press play, now every time, so here's my little star guy right here. So every time I interact with one of these hearts, it's going to disappear, and it's going to give me that dialogue. Your hit points went up. Great. And it's the same one every time. Um, so why don't I show you some examples of other games that I've made um, and the visual design choices that I made there. Okay, so here I've just opened the game on Samurai Debt that I've made and I'm gonna show you um, some of the visual choices that I made. So in the very first room, um, I have these three little things you can interact with and I've put them in between um, the tiles, um, and I've made the tiles walls so that you are kind of forced to walk through this path. Um, so when you play it, um, your little character guy can move around, um, and then he is forced into this path where he has to interact with basically what is like a background info dump, um, but he's sort of forced through it. Um, but I've made them a little bit more visually interesting um, by animating them and making them kind of sparkly. Um, but they're kind of nondescript. They're not supposed to represent anything specific. But if I look at some of the other rooms that I've made, um, I made basically all of the rooms the same because I wanted my story. Um, I, I actually started making my story in Twine and the way that I structured it, I wanted it to be six basically of the same month um, where you had to make the same series of choices. So um, what I have here, so these are not visually perfect, um, but they're supposed to kind of hint at the action that you would be taking if you interacted with them. So why don't I put my avatar here, just so I can show you as an example um, what happens when you interact with these. Um, so this is uh, supposed to be like a stack of money. Obviously it's not a perfect representation because I have very little pixels to work with, but when you interact with it, it's it asks, will you revise the family budget? And if you uh, interact with the next one, uh, then it tells you what happens if you do that. Um, this one is taking out a loan, so I've made something that is kind of reminiscent of a contract, but again, not perfect. Um, will you take out a loan? This one is selling your belongings, so I've tried to make something that looks like a necklace. Um, will you sell some of your belongings? And then when you do, it says you've sold um, some of your wife's nicer kimono and jewelry, you've sold some toys. So I tried to pick something that would kind of represent the action that you're taking every time. This one is moving out to the countryside. This one is starting a handcraft business, which happens to be um, your eldest daughter teaching the family how to make parasols. This one is selling your sword. This one's a little bit more obvious. I think the sword comes across a little bit more clearly than some of the others. Um, and then this one is to do nothing. And then um, here, so basically the way that I structure it is that when you enter the room, you enter it right about here, and you're forced to interact with um, the one the two, the three, etc. in all of these different rooms that you enter. But I decided to keep that to represent the month. So it's like every chapter, um, you're getting a visual reminder that the clock is kind of ticking because you know you have um, six months until your next paycheck. So you visually are seeing that number increase um, as you um, progress. Um, and my other example is this game I made about mental health called Take a Breath, and the premise for this one is that you have just woken up, you're having an anxiety attack or a panic attack, and you're trying to calm yourself down. Um, so there are lots of different things in this little one-bedroom apartment that I've made that you can interact with, and they um, reduce your anxiety stat um, every time you interact with them, and your goal is to calm yourself down enough that you can go back to sleep. So because of um, the way that I've structured this, like I've given you a lot of visual cues that this is an apartment. I've done the top-down layout of an apartment. Um, you can kind of tell from context. So here's another cake that I've made, but it's a little bit more obvious what it is um, in this context of it being a kitchen. Um, like maybe it could be a pizza or something else, but it's a little bit more clearly a food item. 
Um, you have your cup of tea with the, the heat rising, a glass of water that's sparkling a little bit, um, and then everything that you can interact with is a different co color, obviously, than um, the, the background and the walls and things like that. Um, so yeah, so Bitsy is obviously very visually heavy, so when you're designing your game, you just want to think about how can you communicate as clearly as possible to your players um, what something is. With, and you have very limited resources to be able to do that, but things that help are definitely the animation um, and the dialogue, um, things like that. <laughs>